Hi there, Jamie Keat here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today we're going to be going over Microsoft Word. Uh, Microsoft Word is a very powerful word processing uh, processing app. And so this is only going to be a beginner's tutorial on this one. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button on this because if you're interested in learning more Microsoft Word, I'm going to have a lot more tutorials about it plus other Microsoft Office tutorials as well. If you're looking for what uh, parts uh, are going to be in this one today, just look down in the description below and I'm going to timestamp everything. So if there's a certain thing you wanted to look up, you can just click those numbers and it's going to jump to that section of the video to save you a little time. So let's get started to here today uh, going over Microsoft Word for beginners uh, today at Teachers Tech. So I'm just going to go ahead and open my Microsoft Word here. Now I have it pinned to my taskbar down below here. If you don't have it there, you could just type it in. Uh, if I type in Word, you can see I could open it uh, here and sometimes right inside the uh, Windows launch here, you can see it also there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open this one. And when it opens up, I'm just going to give you a brief walkthrough of everything that you're seeing here if you if you are new to this. Uh, first of all, uh, on the left hand side here, this shows other Word documents that I've opened or I've been creating. So if you've created a Word document and you just want to get it back to it uh, very quickly, you know you just work on it, worked on it, it's going to be in most recents here. But the nice thing is if there's a certain document that you want to make sure always stays at the top of it uh, just go up over any of these and you can see there's a little pin here if you click the pin you've just pinned it uh, to the top so the pinned ones if it's something important that you know you're gonna work on lots go ahead and pin it and it's gonna go right up to the top you can unpin it too at any point so it just goes back into your list of uh, more of a chronological order all right, so over here you can see all these templates and I'm just going to talk briefly about the templates. I'll do a different video about the templates because I believe they are so valuable. They will save you so much time once you know how to work just basic Microsoft Word functions here. I use them a lot because you get professional looking quality, uh, whether it be reports, essays or uh, brochures very, very quickly. It's going to save you a lot of time here. Uh, you can see that uh, I have these ones that are in installed here uh, but I can also search online with templates and you can see that there's different categories um, of it uh, but definitely take a look at the templates and uh, you won't be disappointed with the quality of them so for this one today though I'm just going to be using uh, I'm just going to start from blank uh, just to show you the basics of Microsoft Word so I've gone ahead and opened it up uh, here in Microsoft Word. And just to give you a little uh, walk around what everything is here, uh, what we have here is across the top, if I just click, you can see I, when I went to file, it brought me back to uh, places where I can open up previous documents and my printing. And I'll discuss different things with that a little later. Now across the top and you can see they look like tabs and they are tabs so that's what we refer to these across the top row as I click on each top uh, each tab it's going to bring me into um, in, into uh, the category that it suits. Now if you're used to Microsoft other Microsoft Office uh, stuff you'll get kind of used to maybe if you're inserting a picture you know or inserting anything in your document you know to go to the insert or uh, you just pick the correct tab and there's a theme that goes through. With a lot of software, it's all very, very similar. Uh, Microsoft has this nice layout of the tabs. But down below, we have what's called ribbons. So this is the ribbon of each tab. So when I look through uh, this and go, uh, go through, this is the ribbon of the insert tab on it. So if you go through, you can see this is the ribbon here of design and so on. So we have our tab across the top and our ribbon here. Now inside each, uh, I'm just going to go back to the home one, inside each ribbon you can see it's kind of broken up into categories or groups again. Uh, we have, so here's here's our, our ribbon going across, but then we have these groups uh, inside each one. So here if I'm just looking at the font uh, part, we have this group inside this part of the ribbon uh, called font and you can see all the different things that you can work uh, to change uh, to change the font. Now sometimes though uh, everything doesn't fit up here so what you do see this little uh, box right here you can uh, open this up I'm just hovering over it right now and it's kind of showing you uh, what it is right here and each one you can kind of go over and it's going to just pop uh, pop open 
Uh, if I go ahead and click on the font one, you can see that there's more options that I can kind of pick uh, through here that wouldn't have been able to fit in there. So you can customize your setup, but if you're trying to get to more, just click this, uh, this little button right here and you'll be able to see uh, you can see under styles and so on so you can kind of set up things the way you want uh, another thing is before we start putting any uh, anything inside our uh, document here uh, is just the view uh, you may want to change that right away depending on how you want to work uh, I'm going to go up to view over here on my tab so you can I'm going to click that tab and you can see I can zoom so I either have a hundred percent if I want things to go back to hundred percent it's at hundred percent right now if I zoom I can go if I wanted to zoom in on a certain part I could hit 200 percent and hit OK and it zooms up or right. maybe once I have a lot of uh, uh, text or different things in my document uh, maybe I want to show uh, more pages so you can see a one page multiple page and so on the other thing that you can do is uh, down below in the bottom right hand corner here uh, you can see that there's a zoom tool right here you can kind of drag it and uh, customize it very quickly to the way that you want the other thing I wanted to point out too is on the other side on the uh, bottom left hand side you can see that you have your pages how many pages how many words and what your you can see I'm in English United States with the uh, keyboard and typing into it uh, so one more thing here before we start uh, start going and inserting uh, some text into here is to look at this part right here the tell me if you're familiar with Microsoft products this will save you a lot of time if you're ever looking for something uh, all you have to do is start typing in it and you don't have to be even uh, you can't remember the name of something it actually can find things very very uh, help you out uh, quite quickly too so if I didn't know where the margins were uh, maybe I wanted to customize my margins if I start uh, typing in so I just typed in mar you can see right away uh, it gets me to that point so this will save you across uh, all the different Microsoft products is this is the tell me part uh, I really like this because uh, it's going to save you a lot of times if you if time if you don't know where where uh, where you're going to be looking to find something because there's a lot of things to find inside these programs so let's uh, now let's just go over to um, start inserting some text here all right so the first part here is I'm going to insert, show you how to insert some text and how to format it so I'm just going to simply click on the page here and you can see that I have my flashing uh, my flashing spot where I can type I'm going to zoom up a little bit here so we can just see a little bit better and the first thing I'm going to type is here is how to make a YouTube channel okay so this is going to be my title let's say I'm writing a blog entry here and now I want to make some changes to this so let's say if it was different fonts and I'm going to show you some ways to make some quick changes if I double click just on the word YouTube notice it highlights here and I get this way where I can change my fonts very quickly what I want to point out is if I highlighted that I could have gone up here these are it's the same uh, thing as over here so as I double click on it I get these options options to very very quickly just change there so let's say if I wanted to change this word I could change it to a larger uh, different font a larger font and I could go through maybe change colors bold it italicize and all these different things to it if you ever want to pick a line real quickly just move your mouse over to the side and click and the whole line selected and now I can apply this formatting to the whole line so if I go through now I could pick one thing and everything adjusts to just what I had before on it so you can see how everything's back to normal like this the other thing I can do is if I showed you the double click well if I triple click it selects the whole line also so just some different ways to format it so remember when I get this box here for editing my text it's virtually the same as what the font in the ribbon uh, group was too so one thing I like though is using styles now I can get to the styles up here across the uh, across the top or I can do it in my I did a triple click there and I have styles which is the same thing so if I have if I'm clicked on this line notice as I hover my mouse over the different preset styles on this it quickly changes to show me what's going to happen now in this case this is a title here so I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, on title 
and it's going to make this a title so it's already preset to a proper size that a title should be so you can save yourself some time by using the styles. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter now a couple times to give some spacing uh, to it. So I want to enter some more text in here to show you some more ways you can change it. Now this time I've just copied and pasted. So I copied something from an article that I had and I'm just going to right click and paste uh, this for more information here. Uh, so a lot of times when you copy paste you have options uh, to keep everything the same or to clear formatting on it too. Uh, so just some things with, uh, let's say, spacing. Uh, so we've uh, copied, the, uh, copied and pasted this over here. Uh, maybe you can see this is single space. You wanted a double space. You can, um, I'm just going to highlight it here. And what I'm going to do is right here, you can see that this is the line and spacing. So if I drop down, you can uh, set that up to kind of get the spacing that you would like on it. So I'm just going to keep continuing on, write a little bit of information here to keep showing you how to make sure you know with the editing. I'm going to hit enter again. And what I'm going to write down this time is, so the first thing, so maybe there's a list that I'm about to show you in this article. And the first one was, um, I'll say, making a YouTube YouTube uh, channel. And you know what? And I'm going to spell this wrong here. Oh, and it's self corrected. So notice that you do have the self correcting on this one. So, but now if I want to make kind of a list on this one, or maybe a number list or a bullet one, what I need to do is I have this line selected right here. I can go up and then you can see the bullets are right here. I can go ahead and hit the bullets and it will choose that. I could change this to a number here too and if I wanted a number list like so. And the nice thing is when I hit enter after that, it will just automatically number uh, number it here too. So maybe I'm gonna be talking about uh, customizing, uh, customizing something uh, with YouTube here. And then uh, if I hit enter again, it makes another one. If I deleted something, so if I got rid of a list here, notice it just automatically adjusts to the correct number. So let's say I didn't want to delete that, delete that. You can always use Control Z to undo, or there's the back arrow right up top here. So I'm going to hit back, and there's also the redo. So you can go back each way on it. So if you've made a couple of mistakes, just go back uh, with the undo uh, to get to it here. Now, the other thing you can do with uh, when you're making these lists, maybe that there's, uh, you can increase or decrease your font. So if I hit the increase, what it does is almost creates a subset underneath, maybe a new category. Maybe I'll show if this was customizing a YouTube channel, maybe it's through channel art and maybe it's through thumbnails on this. So there's different ways that you can do this. If I wanted it back, then I hit back here. So quick ways to make some really nice list uh, just by using the indent feature. Um, and so you can see right here, so you can use the uh, decrease indent or a decrease indent on this. At any time, if I highlight this, I could go back to bullets and you can see how it adjusted it to just a different uh, color bullet here. Now, if I was going to spell something incorrect, so I'm going to spell uh, YouTube wrong here. Let's see if they can find it here. So YouTube is spelt incorrectly. When you get um, when you get the underline red in here, if I right click on it, you can see that they'll give you uh, maybe some possible corrections of it. A lot of times there's autocorrect, which is already on, so it's going to fix it for you before that. But if I go ahead and click YouTube, you can see how it changes on this. Now, if I wanted to make sure maybe my grammar was correct, correct, or wanted to use the thesaurus when I'm writing, take a look at review here. So the review, you can see the spelling and grammar, and I've already know it's already uh, correct because I've corrected the one word that was wrong. The red would show if you had any incorrect. I like using the thesaurus. So let's say I'll click thesaurus, uh, YouTube, I didn't think they'd find anything, but let's say this word powerful. Now, if I click the thesaurus, maybe I didn't want a different word for powerful. Maybe I want influential. If I, uh, I'm going to go back here, actually significant. You can see over on the side here, if I click on the side, I can insert or copy of it. So maybe, um, 
let's say I'm just going to pick, uh, I'm going to just pick significant and I'm going to insert and I've changed the word from power, uh, powerful to significant. So this is something uh, what I like to use uh, for this one here. Uh, now you can go at any time, check the word count. So hit the word count. You can see how many words, characters, paragraphs inside uh, your channel uh, with the font already. So now I've inserted a little bit more text here uh, in this document and there's a couple of things I want to show you before we get uh, to uh, inserting pictures and that is you can see I have a hyperlink right here. You can make this a live hyperlink too. You can make anything a live hyperlink. I'm just going to highlight uh, this uh, part right here and I'm going to right click on this. I tend to right click. You can find the things that, to their menus but I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to link here. So I'm going to click on link and you can see what text do I want it to display? Well, I can leave it as the same. I, I'm gonna leave it as that, uh, the HTTP to say, and here is what actually I want it to uh, go. So if I hit okay, this becomes a live link. And all I have to do is hit, when I hit control on my keyboard, I can click it and it will go to that site. So that's how you're gonna insert a hyperlink to it. Now, another thing that you can do to just to make things a little bit more attractive with your text is, so at the beginning, maybe I want to do a drop cap. Notice I'm under the insert on the tabs and look at this part of the menu you can see drop uh, cap. So if, if I wanted to add a drop cap you can see how it takes that M and put it in or the different ways that I can have it. I have a few different options to it so I'll just add that as a drop cap. Now another uh, fun thing that you can do with just your uh, text uh, is to add word art. So word art is right here. So if you want maybe a text a little bit more attractive, I can click on it. Right away I can kind of pick some uh, colors, everything that you can adjust after. So maybe I'll pick this uh, yellow right here and I'll just type uh, YouTube. And you can see now I can uh, move this around on uh, if I select it. I can move it to a different place. I had a dot up front there. I better get rid of that. And so I can click on it. I can get my move handles. My move handles are that as soon as I see those that for the arrows pointing the four directions that shows me that I can move it. I could grab the size uh, to make the box larger on on any of this like so. So notice when I also when I'm clicked on it, I get all these different options up top here to uh, make some changes to different things. Like I said, you can change uh, you can change the font, the text fill. You can just go through and play with all these different options of your word art uh, word art style on it. So very quick to add on it, very easy to add. So another thing you can do is add images inside your uh, inside your inside your Microsoft Word very easily. So in this document right here, let's say if I wanted to um, add a uh, add an image, what I'm going to do is go to my insert up top. And you can see I have pictures right here. So I can go uh, and go ahead and click on this. And this is from my computer. So I'm going to just take this image I have of this 3D printer and I'm going to hit insert. Now it inserted where my cursor was. So where I was selected, that's where the image went uh, went to. I can move this. So notice as I drag it, but it doesn't always uh, suit perfectly maybe with uh, with the text on it, but you can see I can move it around to different places, how it broke up the word like so. Now something I can do, I can resize it. So if I grab the corner of this, I can resize this to shrink it up and drag it in and you can see I can still move it around. I can rotate this image in different places. Now over uh, on the side here, this is your uh, layout options. This, this is important to understand when you click on it, you can pick some options. Do you want it to be square in your text? Do you want it to be tight? Uh, through, top and bottom, behind the text, in front of the text. So as soon as I pick one of these options, the nice thing is notice I can put it anywhere. So right now it's in front of the text, so it's allow it's not moving the text around, but I can move, go back to another part and now it adjusts to the text. So this makes it really nice uh, in order, if you're writing something like a article or an essay, if you're putting in images to get it to be right perfect. So if I wanted it right over here, you can see uh, maybe I'll move it up a little bit 
like this. So maybe something like this, you can see now I, at least I have these uh, bullet points separated uh, from it. Now also with the image, again, take a look at all the different effects that you can add. So if, uh, from frames to it, just by hovering over, you can see, um, you know, like this one, uh, soft edges, how else, and that just blends in really, really well to uh, the document. But you can go through and pick different ones uh, just to get an idea. And then there's all these ones too. So make sure you uh, get a chance to uh, just play with these because you'll get, you'll see all the different options that are possible on this one. So I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna change it. I'm gonna change it to this one just because. All right, so you can see I can still move this around anywhere I want. Uh, also on the over here we have some corrections uh, so you can see I can make some adjustments to it. I can change the color if I wanted to make any of those artistic effects uh, to this. So lots of different fun you, you can have right with images right inside. You don't have to do this in a different editor. You don't have to Photoshop or anything. You can do this right inside your uh, Microsoft Word on this one. So uh, as we continue on, just looking at a few different options, you can see with the compress the pictures, change the picture, or reset the picture back to normal on it. Uh, Another thing I just want to point out with images, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, bring in, uh, put in a different image. So I'm going to go to insert here. So I showed you an image. There's a lots, of, lots of different shapes. So maybe you want to point to something, an arrow or different things. So you can see all the shapes that you can be adding. Now I'm just going to pick one for an example. This uh, the arrow. So I'm going to draw it. I'm going to drag it to see how big I want it. And again, as soon as I have it selected like this, notice I up top, I have all the options that I can quickly change to it. So I have the different effects that I can play with um, on it. So you can go through, you can see now how there's a little bit of reflection on this. When you get this right here, this is a rotation, right? So you can drag this to different parts. The other thing I wanted you to pay attention to is the order of different things. So notice when I put this on top of this one here, uh, maybe I want this behind. So if I right click um, on it, uh, what you can do is send it to back or bring to front. So if I send it to the back, notice it's behind this is in front. So sometimes when you're creating different objects, together you might want to be thinking about um, you know about uh, what order you want things and how you want it to, to be shown and you can see up top here how you have all these different options up uh, here whether you're right clicking or looking through the menu you're going to find things and if you can't find something remember just use the tell me and it's going to pop up uh, if you understand what you're looking for and you want it to let's say if I was looking for the ruler I could just say show ruler and there it is like so. Uh, now another thing that you can do if you select multiple images. So if I select this one, hold down my shift and select both. Notice both are highlighted right now. If I right click on this one, I have an option of grouping. What grouping does is uh, when I group, now these are both connected together. So even if I resize them, these two are all connected uh, together on it. So you can see how handy that can be. So maybe you put a bunch of objects in one page uh, and you don't wanna move things one at a time after, select them by holding shift, then right click and group and they're gonna be all together and you can size things. You can see now as I move it, I get one of these and I can, I'll just choose this and I can put it anywhere in it. So that's just some basics about images, inserting images here. I'm not done here. I got some other great things to show you inside this uh, Word tutorial, so make sure you stick around. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about page setup now because this could be an important feature to make sure everything is printed right or even your choice of size of paper. So I tr just recently turned on my ruler uh, when using the Tell Me, but I can adjust my margins up here. If I wanted to drag, you can see how things are changing. Uh, maybe you don't, if you change it, you would just want it undo. Remember, you're undo. Now, what I like to do uh, with my margins, I'm under the uh, layout tab and you can see margins is right here. So you have these defaults that you might want to be using or you can go to custom margins and then you can put in. So if you needed to make some adjustments, you can see how you can uh, just quickly make it and it'll go from all the directions to it from the top to the bottom 
on it. Um, I'm just going to undo. Uh, the other thing is the orientation. So do you want to be in portrait or landscape? So if I go this way, you can see how the page has changed, turned to its size. So this might affect when you're creating a document, if you're trying to fit certain things in like graphs or tables or different things, this could be uh, something you want to do. Also size. So what's the size of the paper? We have all these default ones right through here. Do you need a large sheet of paper like the 11 by 17? or is the eight and a half letter that it defaults to like this uh, going to work for you? So think about these things on setup, how large of a paper, what are you going to be printing to on this one? Uh, the other thing I'm just going to undo, go back to my normal one. Uh, take a look at columns. If you want to uh, insert columns, you can go ahead uh, and click on them. You can see you can choose multiple columns and it's automatically, you can see how it kind of broke up there. Uh, it, put, it will put things into different columns. Now, sometimes if you're on a page and you want to insert a new page, a person might hit enter all the way down. But a quick way to do this, I'm just going to go back to my um, insert here. You have page break. So when I click on page break, what it does is it just creates a brand new page for me uh, right here. You can see blank pages um, here too that I can click on. So if you do need those multiple uh, pages uh, without hitting enter all the way down, just go ahead and and click on those ones. Now, another thing that you might want if you're creating an essay, you get to multiple pages is a header or a footer because that's going to allow you to put page numbers in it. You can either do that for your header or footer. And so I'm going to go uh, just uh, as you can see under insert still header or footer is right here. Now they're going to work the same. Uh, I'm going to put a footer in for this one uh, just for but you can play with the header too. So I'm going to drop down. You can see that they give you different examples um, how you would want it. There's some uh, presets here. So for if I pick this one and click on it, now the nice thing is the footer is going to go across every page that I have. Notice as I have the three different pages now, the one I picked had, had my name, it defaulted, and then I could write um, a school name in here. So I'll write example, spell it correctly, and now I'll click off of it and notice it goes across to every page on it. So that's the great thing about using header or footer. So when I'm clicked uh, in this one here, so with the header footer, the other thing I want uh, you to notice is the page number. So if you need to insert page numbers, you can uh, click on these and where do you want it at the top of the page, the bottom of the page, uh, so you can pick. So maybe I want bottom middle and now I have it inserted here. You can see one, two, and three and there's adjustments you can do inside these uh, depending on how you want your page number. Uh, so if I go to format page number, you can see I have some different options here. Uh, if I click on and go through and you can set up your own page numbers on that one. All right, so uh, just kind of finishing off today. And right, like I said, there's so much to do in Microsoft Word. I want to have more tables showing you how, or more videos on how the tables work and everything. But I'm hoping that this will get you started. One last thing would be printing it. A couple of different ways I like to do this. Uh, I'm going to go over to my file here and you'll be able to see that we have our print option right here. So when we click on print, you can choose your settings that you want. You have number of copies, uh, print all pages, and just click down and look at the different options that you have here. And like I showed you before, the page setup is here uh, uh, to get specifically how you wanted to print or set up your document on it. The other thing I wanted to point out was saving as a PDF. So uh, if you like documents that are PDF, PDF you can take your document here, your Word document and save it as a PDF. It just says this has to be signed first and you go ahead and save it a couple of times and what's going to happen is it's going to convert it over to a PDF like you see here. So this is opened in my Adobe Acrobat uh, on it. So if you want to be working with PDFs, that's how you quickly do this. So I'm just going to open up my Microsoft Word again. You can see I have Acrobat up top. Um, everybody might not have this up top, but you can do the same thing. You can see create PDF here. So I hope you like this tutorial today. Like I said, there's so much information in Microsoft Word. I'm going to be creating a lot more tutorials on it and other Office, Microsoft Office uh, products like PowerPoint, Excel, and Access. Take a look at my OneNote video if you're looking for a great productivity uh, tool that you can use for 
for free that connects very nice with everything. Hope to, you liked what you saw this week. If you have, please hit that like button, share with a few people. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.